the world of guitars, it's a well-known fact that things that are green sound good. This guitar, for example, this PRS SC277. This looked black in the shop where I bought it. A, a fairly well-known retailer in the south of England with a popular YouTube channel. You would think they would have better lighting. This cable, a Fender. I've had this cable for over 15 years and I've never had to repair it. Not once. And overdrive pedals. If you look at any guitar player's pedal board, there's a good chance you'll see some form of small green overdrive pedal. This particular design trend is inspired by the Avines Tube Screamer. Since then, there's a vast array of similar products. And for this video, I've chosen the, the absolute cheapest. It's the Behringer TO800 Vintage Tube Overdrive. This was first released in late 2005, from what I can tell online. Not to be confused with the larger pedal of the same name, the VT911, or the similar TO100 Tube Overdrive, the non-vintage version, whatever that difference happens to be. At the time of writing this video, the TO800 was the cheapest overdrive being sold by a fairly well-known retailer in the south of England with a popular YouTube channel. And at the time of recording this, it sold out. But I got mine in 2007 for the low, low price of 17 euros and 90 cent precisely. Actually got it the same day as a fretless bass, as you'll see later in the video. Now the price of this pedal has wandered up and down in the last 15 years or so since its release, but I've never seen it go beyond 35 pounds, English pounds in this case. And with something that's that cheap, that affordable, new, there's no real saving to be made from looking at second-hand market. The small green overdrive as a type, or tube screamer style pedal, this would be considered to be an archetypal pedal, so a, a standard example, a constantly recurring symbol or motif of a pedal. So let's say you have a few hundred distortion overdrive pedals and you could characterize them in a number of ways. For example, are they bright or dark? Do they have a mid boost or mid cut? And how much gain do they supply? So with these three parameters, we'd have this three dimensional space and every point in the space would be an example of a pedal. Well, you would find the existence of clusters, many different pedals with similar characteristics all kind of going after the same thing. Makes it easier to market if you can say, this is a X type of pedal, this is a Y type of pedal, this is a small green overdrive, etc., etc. So I suspect you'd find a cluster of medium gain, mid boost, not too bright, not too dark pedals. A cluster of green overdrive pedals. I'm not saying they all sound the same, just that they tend to have the same three controls. So let's use this one. As always, you're hearing a Boss Katana 50 with a Shure SM57. No surprises there. Interestingly, without even turning the pedal on, there's already some harmonic distortion in the signal path. I guess this is what people mean when they say, without something like a true bypass, that just connecting the pedal influences the signal. Because the harmonic distortion produced by the pedal looks like this. And you'll see very clearly that it is the third, fifth, seventh, the odd harmonics that are present in the signal, with only a very small amount of the even harmonics. Since last week the weather has been unpredictable, tumultuous perhaps, and this week's music choices have reflected that. One of my favourite albums, but when the first song literally has the word thunder in it, you know it's going to be appropriate. When the cover is a rainy window, you know it's going to be appropriate. When the whole second side is a story of somebody lost at sea, you know it's going to be appropriate. And, and I just liked this album. When you listen to early 80s Kate Bush, you hear a lot of fretless bass, which led me on to this album. A 
adjusting the drive control doesn't visibly do an awful lot here in terms of reducing the amount of distortion and similarly when it's increased and that's partly because the input signal here is just a constant sine wave it's a more dynamic real signal that goes from quiet to loud you will then notice the reaction and the increased distortion of the pedal with just a single sine tone that's not so apparent this is an indication that the pedal responds to the plane dynamics as is often used in the marketing and that's something you see with these overdrives more so than distortions so here I've turned down the input level very low and then slowly turn it up. And this is, I guess, a simulation of what you would get if you started just playing more aggressively, more loudly and hearing more distortion. What I'm trying to do here is also match the level of the fundamental to the level of the fundamental when the pedal is off. So we'll just turn the level control to compensate for that. And now you can more directly see when the pedal is turned on and off the distortion added to the signal. this view, turning the tone control will appear to increase the amplitude of the har harmonics when the tone control is increased, but that's probably just due to the filtering rather than any distortion characteristic, and we'll see that better in the next plot. Now I switch the input signal to white noise and switch the frequency axis scale to logarithmic and adjust the scale of the y-axis. And now we can compare the frequency response of the pedal when it's on and off. There is a mid boost and really the tone control effectively shifts the frequency of this mid boost, although more realistically it's adding as a treble cut, a low pass filter perhaps. That is to say when the tone is maximum, the mid boost is quite a lot. And by reducing the tone from maximum, it's attenuating these higher frequencies, the effect being a reduced mid boost. Because of that, when the tone is on maximum, there's a big increase in perceived loudness of the output. But rolling the tone all the way back, you get quite a dull, dark sound. Because of the low cost of this pedal, I just bought it alongside a bass that I bought, a fretless bass. Incidentally, the first bass I ever bought was fretless. I know that's kind of going backwards compared to most people. But because it has a bit of a low cut, it has a mid boost, and it's distortion characteristic, I found it to be quite useful for adding to the mid-range growl that you might want with certain music played on fretless. Because fretless instruments are having less sustain, you have to play them a bit more aggressively in order to get that sustain back. You have a very different attack characteristic as well, and so a little bit of distortion can really add to that, really make it sound like there are fingers on strings. Overall verdict, it, it's 22 pounds. You really don't need my opinion. Just pick one up, give it a go.